I listened to a debate today as I was driving, and uh, this this debate was very disturbing. I, I didn't believe that people could actually believe what one of the debaters uh, thought. And the two people who were debating was Yaron uh, Books Brooks, something like that. He's an objectivist. That's Ayn Rand's philosophy, pro capitalism. Um, I don't didn't get the impression he was pro crony capitalism, which is very different, probably not worth bringing up, but the opposite of capitalism. Uh, and he debated a guy by the name of uh, Vosh, Vosh, something like that. Oh my gosh, I've got to hand it to this Vosh, Vosh guy. What a voice. Like the guy is made for radio. Um, just eloquent. Uh, he knows a lot of really big words. He says them to, to, like they can string them together in a sentence. And it's just, he's a true pleasure to listen to his intonation. Uh, you know, you think you're, you're listening to a, a talk show host or he is, his voice is just incredible. So I, first of all, big, uh, big respect to uh, Vouch for his voice. Um, that's just incredible. Um, now, the actual debate uh, Yaron, uh, Yaron, Yaron. Um, he, he's a, a, a guy, a, a philosopher, an economist, I think would probably be how he would describe himself. Um, and yeah, his points were, as far as I could tell, they were all accurate or, or right on from an economic perspective, but I've got to pick on him some. His, his delivery was very poor. He has a, a strange accent, and if it's a speech impediment, then I apologize but I think it's a Boston thing. He can't pronounce ours. It was just very distracting. Um, he was very energetic and mad. Like he was yelling, but I just can't believe blah, blah, blah. Just a, a lousy debate style. Um, so from that perspective, again, going back to Vosh, Vosh just has this posh voice that's just a true pleasure to listen to. Um, the content, yeah, that, that goes down, you know, like who's right and who's wrong. That goes down to Yaron. He wins that, you know, hands down. There's no question there. But his his aggressive style, um, I would say he probably spoke, Yaron probably spoke 70 or 80% of the time. And yet every time Vouch would repeat, he only said a few things, but he kept repeating them. But each time he would try to repeat them, it's his time. He should be allowed to repeat what he said earlier and ask the same question, which has been answered. But it was frustrating because Yaron got way more airtime than the other guy. And um, and I also, I'm gonna pick on Yaron again. Um, I don't think he was very fair to Vosh. Vosh kept asking the same question over and over and over again. And in Yaron's mind, he was giving a correct answer. But this is a downfall. This is where I put Yaron down yet again. He didn't realize he's not talking to a guy who's, you know, well-versed in economics and, and history and, and such. He's talking to a guy who has heard a lot of sound clips and has attended some very biased educational seminars, uh, whether it was college or whatever it was. He's not talking to somebody who's an intellectual, a thinker, uh, somebody like that. He's talking to a guy with a brilliant voice, just this deep, uh, his intonation was wonderful. Um, just everything was so authoritative and he just, when he would say something, it sounded like, you know, I mean, he was truly impressive. And Yaron treats him like he's some sort of Walter Block or type of intellectual, which was just completely unfair. So I didn't approve of that. Um, he should have, Yaron should have, when he kept getting the same question asked to him over and over and over again, he should have realized, hey, this guy's not catching on. He's on a different level than I am. And I'm going to, I'm not going to say dumb it down, but I'm going to try to change the way that I say it in a way that Vosh can understand. And yet he kept saying, the question was, and this is worth looking at, Vosh says, how does a society know what a, a person's value is in the, in the workplace, so a laborer. And Yaron kept repeating, well, it depends on what they get paid because if they're being productive, if they have a high level of productivity, they're gonna be getting paid a lot. 
If they're not getting paid much, if they're flipping burgers, then they're probably not producing at a high level. I mean, they might be producing a bunch of burgers, but it's a very simple job that just about anybody can do. So something that's complicated, that takes a lot of effort and training and self-training, experience, practice, special skills, gifts, whatever one wants to call it, um, that person will, you know, is going to make more than the person who has no skills is, is kind of what Yaron was saying. And then uh, Vosh kept saying, yeah, but what is, who's to say what the value per hour or whatever is of a person who is flipping burgers? And, and again, the same answer from Yaron and the same answer. And well, I got it right away, but I read a lot of books and I study economics and I'm not as you can tell right now, I'm not cool in front of camera. I don't have a cool voice. Um, I have a very different set of interests and he should have made it so that the guy could understand. So um, I will try to do that and, and say that um, the free market, and when I say free market, let's not think of the thing that we've heard is bad. Let's look at the words free, un, un, unhampered or just able to go about and do what it wants market, that's a bunch of people interacting with each other. So a bunch of people interacting with each other without any rules or people holding knives to their throat, telling them they can or can't do this or that or, or anything like that. Those people all make purchasing decisions and they decide if they're going to buy a product or a service, if they're going to not buy it. And I can't, and neither can Vosh or neither can Yaron, those guys, they can't say what uh, what the dollar value is of somebody that makes five buggy whips in an hour. What should that person be paid? Well, I don't know. Neither do those guys. No human being can know that. But all the human beings that are interested, they're in the market, they are going to send market signals. And if nobody's buying buggy whips now in 2021, then... Well, there's a pretty clear market signal that that labor isn't of much value. That productivity isn't of high value. It's not producing much that, that anybody cares about. And so the market then, when I don't buy a buggy whip, and neither does Yaron, and neither does Vosh, well, we are all sending these, they're called market signals. We are sending these little pieces of information to the buggy whip maker uh, the owner of the company, the CEO, the, the, the person that Bosch thought was ego, evil, uh, we're sending messages to that person and we're sending it to the laborers. Hey, we don't really value what you're producing. We're looking for something more like a smartphone. And then it's up to the business owner and up to the laborer to decide, hey, do we want to get into that business or keep doing this business that's dead or, or dying or, or just a very small volume? And so the market is who decides what a person's value is. Now, does that sound harsh? That was kind of the argument of Vosh. Vosh says, well, yeah, but if, you know, you're saying that you're going to just let people die. Well, let people die? Like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to kill them, but it's nature that would kill an animal that doesn't, you know, if a bird doesn't build a nest or a, a fox doesn't build a den or something like that, if a, if a bear doesn't find a place to hibernate, if they don't make the effort, if they don't put the productive effort into finding that hole to crawl into, that home, then yeah, when the cold, harsh winter comes, they could very well die. But it's nature's fault. And it's not even a fault. It's just kind of how things are. It's kind of like gravity. If we know that gravity exists and we know that a cold winter is coming, then we should keep those things in mind as we navigate our way through life. So in the example of in the economics realm, the, the example would be if you want to be able to eat food and you want to be able to have a shelter and you want to be able to go to a movie, or now I guess they're watching those Netflixes or something, but whatever it is that you want to do with your life, if you want to do those things, you can. But you can't just sit around and have it all handed to you. If you want a thing, then you have to say, okay, how much does that thing cost? How do I get the money to pay for that thing? And now I need to go out and create that much value. And I have some friends that say, I don't really want 
the, the commercialized money, stuff that money can buy. I just like to spend a lot of time with my friends, hanging out, smoking weed, talking, just having good friendships. Great. I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. That's, that's your choice. And I hope you enjoy that. And if all you need is a little bit of money to go out and buy the marijuanas, great. If that's all you want to produce, that's all the money you want, I don't mind that at all. But if you want to eat, and if you want a shelter, and if you want clothing, and you want those kinds of things, eh, then you kind of need to go out and find a way to get those without harming other people. And it, it's not the fault of the person who's working hard or the person who's involved in some other system. It's not their fault that you do or don't get to have a home to live in. Uh, it's not the capitalist's fault. It's not the socialist's fault. It's, it's nature's fault that houses don't just fall down out of the sky for free but to, to everybody. It's just, it just kind of isn't how nature works. So then the, the, the big argument for the Bosch was making is, well, we live in a wonderful times, everybody's wealthy and we should all be able to have everything and it should just be lovely. Well, cool. If you can achieve that without stealing, like that would be a pretty low bar, right? If you can achieve it without stealing, without using force or coercion um, against other people, if you can do that, yeah, by all means. If you want to go out and work hard and buy three houses and give two of them to other people, great. You're welcome to do that. But if you choose not to, if you choose to have three houses and you want to live in each of them for four months, completely your option. That doesn't make you morally better or worse than the person who chooses to only work hard enough to have one house or only work hard enough to buy some marijuanas to smoke with their friends in their friend's house or the person who wants to buy 20 houses because they like having a bunch of different houses to live in. It's all okay. We get to do what we want. We, we shouldn't initiate violence as Vosh continually suggests. Now he uses his uh, awesome, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning, he has this incredible voice. Um, and, and if, if he, he, he just kept saying it over and over and it, it was so impressive that you know if a person doesn't wanna have to work, they should still reap all the benefits. They should still have food and shelter and all that stuff. No, no, Vosh, you're, you're wrong there. Um, I, I, I'm, I was really trying to say, okay, maybe he has a point here and I'm probably wrong and hard headed. And I just couldn't, I, I don't know what he was talking about. It just, didn't, it didn't make sense because everything he said was based on violence. Maybe that's what it comes down to. Maybe it comes down to what people value. Vosh values a person who doesn't want to work, wants to take 10 years off in their 20s and just relax. He wants that person to still have a house and food, dignity, respect, without having earned any of those things. He, still, he wants the person to still have that. Well, that is a higher value to him. And to me, fairness, justice, um, hard work, being productive, being good, those things are of a higher value. So I guess, I guess we have different values. Let's go back for, right before we close, let's go back and talk about capitalism for just a moment. What is capitalism? It's a scary word to some people, but it is essentially, capitalism is when the means of production are owned by individuals. And that is, that is compared to the means of production being owned by government or communes or something like that. So, so the, the means of production, what does this mean? This means that if you have a hairbrush, for example, and you brush your hair, that's not really a means of production. That's a personal item. And it's okay, according to the non-capitalists, it's okay for a human being to own a comb or a brush to brush their hair. That's acceptable. But if they start using that brush and exchanging hairbrushing <laughs> sessions for money, they should not be doing that. That should be up to the commune, to the community, to set up a hairbrushing business and, or not even business, a service. And then anybody who wants it can come and get it. That comb or that brush should belong to the commune, not to the individual. So, Everybody believes in 
a means of production of the comb or the brush. Nobody's against that. It's just, is it is it a privately owned thing or is it a communal thing? Is it the, the commune that owns it? And so the, the capitalists, which I am, I was hoping I'd find some points to be changed, but again, they, they have a, a talking head, a brilliant voice, deep voice, uh, just the intonation was incredible, love his voice, but, but just not a thinker and not somebody who understands economics. He didn't understand the, the, what capitalism is. He thinks it's the same as crony capitalism. And so uh, I am a capitalist. I think that if you want to use your brush and have people exchange glasses of orange juice for, for hair brushings, you should be able to do that. And no one should tell you that they that you can't. No one should get a penny out of that or a sip of the orange juice that you've earned for giving a, a hair brushing. That all belongs to you. But that's that's my philosophy. Um, I, I just, I, I hope that you will listen to this. I, I don't know. I don't even know if it's worth listening to. It's enraging because I feel like Yaron took a little bit of advantage of somebody who wasn't at his level intellectually. And it was, I'm not gonna say he was mean or a bully, but he just, he won 100% of the points he made and didn't give the guy a chance to even feel good about himself. Um, and he was overbearing and he dominated the conversation in a yelling voice and that's very frustrating. So those are just a few of my thoughts. I hope this is, uh, you know, piqued your interest in watching it or if you have already seen it, I uh, hope you'll share your thoughts and uh, thank you for listening and please be nice to each other and, and don't steal from other people. And I know that's biased and, and Yash wouldn't like that, but that's what I believe.